we're kind of respiratory athletes. The wind instrumentalists are really respiratory athletes. I started playing flute around 16 years old. I decided to go and study in music to become a professional musician. And uh, while I was studying, first the different teachers told me different things about breathing, things like, you know, push with your diaphragm, uh, do this, put the air at the bottom of your lungs, and things like that. I was like, I was really confused. So I decided to go and look into books to find out about, you know, how does it work, this respiratory system. And this was not aligned to what the teachers were telling me, so I was even more confused. Okay, stop, 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 just go bout, just go bout, just go bout, just go bout, carte définitive. There has been a lot of research on the respiratory system, but not while music playing. So the need was really triggered when I started teaching because I had I did not want to repeat exactly what my teachers had told me because I, I could not understand it my, myself. So that led me to go and do a doctorate at the Université de Montréal. And I, fortunately, I was introduced to Peter Macklem, who became one of my mentor, Peter Macklin was uh, one of the most renowned respiratory physiologists in the world. And I was trained at the Meekins Christie Laboratory uh, here at McGill to do research on respiratory mechanics. If we understand better how the body is involved, it's very useful to make a lot of progress at a much faster pace than, you know, just trying out things up in the air. So what we're doing here, we're using a motion capture system, which when it's used for respiratory mechanics, it's called optoelectronic plethysmograph. The Schulich School of Music is the only school of music that has an optoelectronic plethysmograph to measure the respiratory mechanics of musicians. So that's pretty awesome. So it consists of nine infrared cameras, and we put reflective markers on the thorax of the player the infrared cameras film those and we reconstruct in three dimension the chest wall displacement. That allows us to have information about the volumes of air used during performance. So we also measure the electric activation of the respiratory muscles or the main respiratory muscles with uh, electromyography, so surface EMGs. That allows us to be able to describe what are the respiratory patterns that people are using while performing. We also measure mouth pressure, that is a respiratory parameter. We also, in addition, we also started looking at the lips parameters. So we would look at the opening of the lips that would give us some information about the flow of the air and the velocity of air that is used when performing and also about the distance of the lips from the edge of the flute. When you understand better all the parameters that are involved and how they are correlated and how they influence each other, well, you can better like control them. And in fact, what we found out in, a, in our studies is that we are using differently our respiratory system. So there's not one way that it can be taught for everyone. That really goes against the belief that, you know, there's only one way to breathe properly. It has to be kind of tailored to the body and to the needs of musical tasks, but also the body of each performer. All those findings are the first steps into developing new strategies to teach breathing to musicians, because if we don't understand the, rest, the breathing they're using, we can't really teach it um, very efficiently. So the next step is also to develop visual uh, technological tools to help musicians better understand what's happening inside their body. My goal is to clarify and demystify some concepts that are going around and that are maybe not very accurate.